gastroparesis or delayed gastric emptying, the partial paralysis of your stomach, all of these great things that I used to deal with. Gastroparesis can cause symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, pain after eating, really bad bloating, very little appetite. For some people, this means that the amount that they can eat is just reduced. And for some people, it's really reduced or basically impossible. And in that case, they can use something like a feeding tube. Today, we're gonna go over what helped me when I was dealing with gastroparesis based off of each symptom. So symptom by symptom. Um, I was dealing with gastroparesis for so many years. There were a lot of years where I was kind of building up to full-fledged gastroparesis and then it full-on hit me at like 18, 19 and it was bad. I'm now 23, almost 24 tomorrow or March 5th. I don't know when I'm gonna post this so it might be today and I'm not really dealing with it anymore which is not the case for a lot of people but I will tell you what I did when my gastroparesis was bad and I'll also tell you what happened during the time that my gastroparesis started to get better. I don't know if it caused it to get better or if it just happened to be at the same time and it's a complete coincidence but anyway let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is bloating. <laughs> bloating was a huge symptom for me especially towards the beginning and right when it got horrible. So after I ate, it would just like, I would bloat out. It'd be so painful and very, very visible. Sometimes people say they feel bloated, but you don't see it. I'm really talking about, I guess, distension and the feeling of bloat. What I think was interesting about my bloating and that I've never really seen somebody else just, I mean, how often do I stare at people's photos of bloating? It was towards the upper part of my belly, my abdomen. I'm pretty sure it's because the issues I was dealing with were in fact in my stomach and all kind of like upper intestinal stuff, um, not lower intestinal things, but you can kind of see a little bit of like a bump of where the bad bloating was. Then in the middle, we were good. And then it got kind of bad again, lower down. Weird, but anyway, number one thing that helped it, and you're not gonna believe this, gas -X. Oh my God, whoever made gas -X, like if they, like, okay. If I were to pick three medications I'm most thankful for, literally Gas-X, Advil, and penicillin. Uh, I mean, I'm probably missing something way more important, but whatever. It basically just makes the air kind of dissipate. And I was tested for like SIBO, I don't know, three times. And I was even treated once because they were like, I don't know, I know it says you're completely negative, but just in case, because you're bloating so bad. Um, but really Gas-X was amazing. Something else I do when I would bloat a lot was um, use a heating pad. I'm actually using it right now. So that's perfect. This one is really big. My other one broke. This is like ginormous. So I could just put that on my stomach and he can kind of help. What's so annoying about my bloating when I was like 18 and 19 is that it was consistent. It never, ever went away. Um, so I would, you know, spend like five months where I was always bloated and I had to make adjustments to what I wore because you could really see it and it bothered me a lot. Um, and I couldn't wear a lot of the clothes because it didn't fit me, but it was still my size um, because if it suddenly started going down for like a week and I got really lucky, then I'd fit into those other clothes. So then I have multiple sizes of pants. It was just very annoying. Pain. Pain is probably the worst symptom of my gastroparesis. I know that there are some people who are kind of like me and that's also their worst symptom, but for the most part, it's usually nausea and vomiting that are like the main ones. And there was one thing that I started noticing when I was around 18, which is that whenever I ate protein or a lot of it, it hurt a lot more than eating other things like, I don't know, a grain that didn't have very much protein in it. I must have done some online research or something like this. I really don't know. And I don't think my doctor said that I could do this. I don't know how I got to this, but I ordered on Amazon something called Betaine HCL. And I don't understand the stomach very well. It is very complex and confusing. I mean, I know that your stomach has a lot of acid uh, and it's supposed to help, I think, break up the food. And one of those things is hydrochloric acid. Maybe it's that my stomach was not producing enough or something like that but basically when I started taking these pills I started taking it must have been you know I then consulted a doctor wait now I remember hold on hold up I remember now I started I started
started consulting on my doctors. He said, yeah, that's fine, you can take it. And I started with one or two and it didn't make a difference. And he was like, why don't you go up a little bit? So I started going up and when I started taking, I kid you not, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just saying what happened for me. I took like maybe like six to eight for every single meal I ate with protein. And oh my gosh, it helped so, so, so much. I can't even describe. Then over time, I started being able to actually um, edge my way off of them, like wean my way off of them. And I went, you know, to five, I went to four, to three, to two, to even just one for a while. And then I was fine and I was able to stop taking them. I don't know if this was my gastroparesis though. I just need to put that out there because, you know, I do have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and I think a lot of weird things happen. <laughs> There's a lot of comorbidities and I cannot promise you that this helped me because of my gastroparesis and it could have rather been that I had gastroparesis and I just kind of had something else that was a bit weird or a bit off and taking these things helped it. So I don't know. The other thing I did was I also noticed that vegetables started hurting me a little bit later on. So I got something very similar um, and it's like an enzyme to help you digest vegetables. Helps, helps so much. I mean, you could just see my stomach, the difference after eating if I took these versus if I didn't. I'll leave both of those in the description below in case you're interested in checking them out. That might be something that you wanna run by your doctor first though. I really don't know much about it, so just saying. And then a heating pad was really helpful when it came to pain, as was gas -X. amazing. Nausea and vomiting, okay. Um, medications, number one thing. I mean, yeah, I used to, suck on ginger candies did it help a little bit like you know did it actually make much of a difference i'm not sure but it was at least soothing to me and to my mind to be sucking on something that is very soothing but also slightly harsh in a way when feeling so ill so i would definitely recommend trying sucking on like a ginger candy if you've never tried it i think it kind of helps a little bit you know but just as a smidgen but really the main thing is medications. Now I've tried a bunch of nausea medications, but when I have a little bit of nausea, but a little bit more than I can handle at that moment, I'll take a compazine or a prochlorperazine, whatever. Um, and I'll just stick it in my gum and it kind of just sits there for a few hours or like an hour dissolves and it helps. Um, it doesn't make me tired. Um, I feel totally normal. Then sometimes I'll take a Zofran. Zofran gives me a headache and it also makes me tired, whereas the Compazine doesn't. But it does help the nausea, they both do. But the best medication I've ever taken, and this is only in the hospital once when I was like dying of nausea. Um, they gave me Ivy Amend. Um, let me see what the actual ingredient, like what it's actually called. It's called Fosaprepidant Dimeglumine. Never mind, I'm not gonna say it. And I mean, that just helped my nausea way more than anything else. Heartburn slash acid reflux. Now, I didn't deal with acid reflux that badly, actually, when my gastroparesis was bad. I dealt with it a lot more before it was bad. Um, and gosh, why did somebody not tell me this? But basically, my doctors had given me a few different medications to try to help it, like Zantac and some other things, and it totally worked. But why did nobody tell me that Tums work for acid reflux? Like, I feel like that's so basic, but I didn't know it. And they work almost immediately. Whereas when I took Zantac, which I'm pretty sure is known to cause like stomach cancer now and is off the market. Uh, but anyway, it would take like 45 minutes. So I'd be sitting there in horrible pain in the middle of the night till it kick in. And anyway, just wish I knew about Tums. Um, so Tums. So the beginning part of my gastroparesis, I really actually didn't have too much like lack of appetite. I'd be really hungry and the only reason I'd stop eating is because I'd be in a lot of pain, too much pain to continue. Um, but then when I got a little bit older um, and a little further into the gastroparesis, then yeah, I definitely dealt with um, some lack of appetite. So it sucks eating when you feel like you're just force feeding yourself. It's disgusting, like you don't wanna eat. I think this is pretty obvious, but whenever I ate something that was sweet, that really helped me because I didn't wanna eat something that tasted like not sweet. It's the only thing I could potentially wrap my mind around. Um, sometimes like a protein bar would be a good option if I could stomach it because it has a lot of calories and it has nutrition in it to some extent. Um, and it tastes pretty good, but it's better than sitting there eating a Kit Kat, you know? 
foods I stayed away from. Um, so I, here's the thing. So yes, I had gastroparesis and yes, that was the main problem going on. But as with the whole, you know, when I mentioned that taking those like betaine HCL supplements and stuff helped my stomach, I don't know if there was just something else like small on top of it that was going on that sort of separates my symptoms a bit. Cause I feel like this is not something that like a lot of people deal with. But the thing is, is that I had so many food sensitivities kind of or intolerances at the time. And I, now that my gastroparesis is better I literally don't have them anymore so there were a lot of foods I stayed away from because of that some of the big ones were I did not eat gluten I still don't I did not eat dairy I can now just not too much because I am lactose intolerant garlic I don't know why now it doesn't hurt me the slightest bit but back then killed corn the death of me oh my god I oh my gosh and I want to say canola oil as well um, and maybe another type of oil but really canola oil and then like basic ones like beans and like lentils no 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 and then I've heard that red meat can be bad but I've literally never had red meat in my entire life so I also sometimes would avoid warm liquids oh my god I forgot the main one fruit I literally couldn't eat fruit I could not eat fruit it was so painful oh my god i don't know why i did not put fruit beforehand oh my god what is wrong with me and raw vegetables raw vegetables no 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 god no i still can't eat most raw vegetables i can have certain lettuces or actually most lettuce i just can't have like kale or broccoli raw like carrots no now i'm gonna tell you what made my gastroparesis worse like what happened so I was having symptoms of gastroparesis for a while and it was building and building and building and building. Then I got mono, um, sort of, like when I say sort of, I mean, I had mono, like and I tested positive for mono in like the normal mono positive testing way. And I felt like I had mono, but not as bad as normal mono. Like I always heard that people were bedridden. I was not bedridden. I was like, I just feel terrible and need to like sleep and go to bed at like seven or eight, but it lasted guys like five months. Slowly my gastroparesis started getting worse from getting mono. Now let's talk about what made it better, which is around like six months later. So this is now first semester or sophomore year. Right when I went into second semester, it started getting a little bit better and it like continued to improve, but it still was bad. So now we've just entered into second semester, my sophomore year of college, and it just remains bad, but not horrible. Bad all throughout second semester, all through the summer, and all throughout first semester of junior year. I got diagnosed with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and I started taking duloxetine. Additionally, in the summertime, and in first semester junior year, my POTS undiagnosed was building. I started taking duloxetine. A few weeks in, my pain got better. I started taking it for chronic pain because of my EDS. Then my gastroparesis started getting better slowly. And since then, it has just continued to improve and improve and improve and improve. Something else that happened was now, we're going to my second semester junior year. I got diagnosed with POTS. I started taking medications to increase my blood pressure. Then I started medication to bring down my heart rate. I started getting saline infusions. Around this time, my gastroparesis got even better. I think that dealing with my dysautonomia helped my gastroparesis, and I do believe that that would make sense. Um, though it's hard for me to necessarily say that those medications like definitely help. But maybe that could just give you a talking point with your doctor or maybe if you've noticed the same pattern in yourself, I'd love to hear in the comments if you could let me know. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you're dealing with gastroparesis, I'm sorry, it's so hard. It 
like nobody understands it unless you're dealing with it, you know? Um, or sometimes I feel very connected to people who are dealing with something like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. It can feel so good to connect with somebody else who understands it. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button because it really helps YouTube suggest my video and it would make me really happy if more people with gastroparesis would see this because I hope that it can be helpful. And I'll see you all on the next video. Bye.